The revolution that Abraham Lincoln led, in short, was not the same one. It was not as full, not as complete as the one that many former slaves wanted and that they needed and deserved and tried to obtain. But it can be argued, and it has been argued by, among other people, Frederick Douglass, that Lincoln's more limited goals and more limited priorities were precisely what helped bind northern white vo voters and northern white soldiers to him. In other words, that Lincoln's identification with the interests primarily of middle class white men is what enabled him to be elected and then re-elected in the first place and that sustained him in office. And I think this is undoubtedly true. So it reminds us that the limits of the second American revolution reflected not simply the limits of Lincoln's vision but also reflected the values and assumptions of his political constituency as a whole. Reminds us what the Republican Party was and wasn't. It may well be, therefore, that Lincoln was as radical a figure as could have led that revolution, and that he accomplished as much as could have been accomplished in that specific time and place. And what it did accomplish was monumental indeed. It was, in fact, one of the most sweeping social and political revolutions of the 19th century. No other country in the Western Hemisphere, with the sole exception of Haiti, eliminated slavery as swiftly and radically as did the United States. Abraham Lincoln was the undisputed and very possibly also the irreplaceable leader of that revolution. And if he stepped into that role reluctantly, as historian James McPherson has put it, and put it rightly, he nonetheless carried it out very effectively indeed. 